companies are really looking at uh, at expanding to China. Um, there, there's a few key questions. Where are you going to do it? Um, why? What are the advantages? Uh, you're going to have to have some Chinese partners over there. Uh, so you're going to have to spend definitely a bunch of time to go see them, get to know them. Um, like everything building your business here, well, it all comes down to uh, creating a good relationship. Um, a good base to get started is uh, Swissnex in Shanghai. Um, they are well connected into the local uh, ecosystem. Uh, so that's actually an excellent place to get started. Um, now, what we realized also is that uh, as all the startups, uh, whether it comes from the US or, or Europe, they, when they view China, they, they tend to think of Beijing, Shanghai, uh, Shenzhen, Hong Kong. Um, they're really looking at the tier one cities. Um, and as a startup, um, that might not be actually the best place to go start off. Uh, the reason being, uh, these are really big cities where all the Western companies go. And, and uh, because of that, a lot of the, let's say, focus uh, and priority, it's rather going to be given to these really big companies um, that already have sales, that can create a lot of jobs. Um, however, you have a number of other cities uh, throughout the country that um, are, let's say, a little bit jealous of the economic development of these tier one cities and they want to catch up. And for them, the way they can catch up is we need to get some high growth, high potential startup companies active in deep. Um, and there's a number of, let's say, um, government programs and, and sponsorships and funding that's actually available. Um, and so that's why I put this list here. Um, def it's definitely worse to uh, worse going to see these cities uh, firsthand. Um, I'll explain to you how you can actually um, set up, get some funding and, and get uh, located over there. Um, I know very well Hangzhou, but basically you have every city that's kind of competing against each other to attract these, these startups and talent. Um, so what? So what's the uh, relations and, and people we, we, we got to know in our first trip in 2018, uh, they came back to us later and they said, hey, there's a uh, open call by the city of Hangzhou. Uh, they're looking at attracting some startups. Uh, so well, we can help you out uh, to send the applications. Um, and if they select you, well, then you go, you'll have to go defend the project uh, in the city itself. Uh, this is exactly what happened. Uh, we ended up third place, which is three million um, uh, Chinese yen grant. Um, and so that's about 420k in Swiss francs um, at back at that time. Um, now, once you do get um, this this grant by the government, you're going to have to actually have to negotiate with the local government on the grant terms, uh, and I'll go into detail right after that. But we were in that period just when COVID started to appear. So uh, we were negotiating and it took us three months to find an agreement on those terms. Then the COVID pandemic uh, hit um, and the government was actually trying to bring us over there. We were, let's say, a bit afraid of the situation in the world and reading the news, it was not always reassuring also what, what you read about China. Uh, but in any case, we saw that um, the second wave was arriving in, in, in Europe, um, that there were going to be more lockdowns, and we had this open door to fly out to Hangzhou to relocate. We got get some funding. Um, you actually have to get this government funding, you actually have to kind of relocate and go there present and, and open a company in the city uh, that is sponsoring you. Um, and this is really what this is uh, the structure uh, that we negotiated. Um, basically, so Hangzhou, it's a huge city. You have like almost 20 million and it's broken down in different districts. Uh, so we uh, were in a program of the Jiangang uh, district, uh, which is pretty close to the center. Um, and they're going to break down this grant into three trenches. Uh, the first one, um, they want to see your commitment to building the business there. So 
you will have to head to the city, uh, create a local company branch, um, and match half match that first trench with some of your own money, either from your investors uh, or from your parent company, because um, they really want to see that commitment uh, that you want to be there and, and build a business there. The only reason they're giving you uh, this grant because there's no strings attached, um, it's free money, but it's all under the purview that um, you're going to build your business there and hopefully create jobs and generate some tax revenue. Um, then, so, so then you have the second trench. Basically, they tie it to a technical milestone or, or, or business milestone that has to be achieved uh, in the country itself. And, and there, they'll give you the other 40% of the grant. And, and the final 30%, um, basically, they'll give it to you only once you've actually paid uh, in taxes um, the amount of the grant. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a good place to start. And there's actually other advantages that you that you can get also from uh, getting into this program. Um, so for another one is okay, you'll get very highly subsidized office space. Um, if we look at uh, our office space, so it's, the government built all these technology parks, and and they have a ton of room, and they will rent it at like the very best price. Um, they'll even sponsor 50% of that cost over the first three years. Uh, so basically we had this 113 meter square office and it just cost us uh, 5.6K uh, in the year. Um, also to get you started, they can even provide you a free apartment or if you really want to buy, let's say, um, you can actually even buy housing over there and you can get it at under market uh prices um they will also even support you and help you to get your family relocated um and get you your kids into very good school so there's a whole bunch of other benefit that come around this because uh, they want to make that transition and relocation and for you to actually be there um as easy as possible um so we had this let's say the second wave that came over there um just a few photos so the airport was pretty crazy. Um, uh, the flight was almost empty. Uh, half the people were actually even dressed uh, as the, the people who, could, who uh, let's say, greeted us and did our COVID test. Um, I'm sure you saw, uh, let's say, the quarantine hotels, because when you arrived, we had to do a two week uh, quarantine. Uh, but it was actually one of the best uh, hotels we've ever stayed. Uh, but we, we were stuck in there for like a full two weeks. Uh, it was a five star, but it cost like 40 francs uh, a night. So, uh, um, but once once we got past that quarantine, um, basically life was completely free. So we went out to grab a burger. We went out to a rock concert. Everybody was jumping around. Uh, and that's in November 2020. Um, we even went up to Beijing. Uh, it was it was really weird because uh, the tour bus, uh, they're, they're like, you're the first tourist we've seen for a whole year. Uh, so here we're at the wall of, wall, Great Wall of China. Um, while they're really taking the opportunity uh, to meet as many people as possible and, and see more of the country. So uh, on the right here, it's Hangzhou. That's the Westlake area. It's a very tourist uh, area. Actually, what's beautiful about the city is um, you have the, the downtown center, but you can drive 15 minutes and you'll end up in the middle of the forest and, and tea fields and there's nobody. It's a huge park. Uh, so uh, it's actually one of my favorite. Uh, it is my favorite city in the world <laughs> at this stage. Um, but getting back to the business. So um, so when we arrived, when I arrived, I, I had to create a company, a local company. Um, it was created under the form of a wholly owned foreign enterprise. So basically, um, I was the only owner of the company. Um, and then it could, because you, you get accepted as a talent. So they take, they're rather taking the entrepreneur and, and using him really as the key structure to, to getting everything moving over there. Um, 
And yeah, maybe also let's say um, you have to get a license on your field of activity. Um, sometimes it can be pretty hard and the, the government can be, let's say, pretty picky. Um, but if you get this uh, local government support, that can actually make it really easy and you can get a whole list of activities uh, for your business because they want to make do everything they can do to help you to be successful over there. Um, Here's, for example, the business card uh, that you create. Uh, you, you send everything out um, on WeChat. So you have the English version here, but uh, sometimes you, a ton of times you'd actually be communicating uh, just through WeChat with people who might not necessarily speak English. Uh, so it, you can have that conversation and, and do business just through the WeChat application because you have an instant translator in there. So um, it's not, mandatory to know Chinese. I still don't know Chinese, but I can go over there and I can do everything and feel almost at home uh, just thanks to the technology. You just need to get used to using the plugged into the WeChat app, into the payment system so you can actually use your even your foreign credit card to pay everything with your phone. And then you have to get used to the Chinese apps to move around. So. Basically, Google Maps will not work, but you'll have the Chinese map that's called a map. It it's, works exactly the same. Uh, you can type stuff in English in there and you learn to navigate it just like you do with Google Maps. Um, an interesting place where we actually got um, invited um, when we arrived is uh, we got invited to pitch at the Shanghai uh, Stock Exchange star market. So the star market, it's basically um, they invite companies that have the potential for an IPO in China. So um, if by going there, if you can get invited and present there, there you can meet some like uh, top A-list uh, investors that you could never uh, even dream or get connected to uh, otherwise. Um, so when I went pitching there, what happened then I ended up getting an invitation uh, two, three weeks later to go pitch at Ant Group, which is basically the Jack Ma and and uh, whole entrepreneurial group. Uh, now, I didn't even understand who I was pitching or where I was until I actually got there the day itself, because they might not always be very forthcoming or they say, oh, who am I meeting? And they say, oh, you're just meeting Simon. Okay, Simon, who? But, oh, just come and you'll see. And then you end up there, you're pitching in front of the CEO of the Ant Group, which is worth uh, billions and billions. Um, so we were looking at raising capital with uh, family offices, high net worth individuals, but then we saw, let's say, very strong interest actually from strategic partners and from companies there. Uh, so we went through a whole um, negotiation and, and discussion and due diligence with a number of different strategic partners over there. Um, what we ended up doing is uh, we had this deal on the table um, of four million equity investment. That was basically for us to do a pilot trial. Um, but the company, what they're really interested in is, and, and that's the number one interest of any strategic partner or investor in China, it's they want the right exclusive rights uh, for your product to sell it in China. Um, so we spent, let's say, I think four, four months negotiating the terms of this licensing deal. Um, it was a 50 million licensing deal for exclusive rights on Great China. So that includes Hong Kong and, and Taiwan, uh, plus a royalty on sales. Um, unfortunately, just as we were starting to sign the papers uh, and, and finalize everything, um, the, de the deal fell, fell apart um, and that came from really two reasons and I think um, the timing uh, can can actually screw up your deal. Like I, I think if we'd gone to China a little bit earlier, we might not have been um, in have those issues in, in closing the deal. So um, one issue was an internal board conflict at the public uh, pharma company. Um, basically, we had our internal champion, so we had the CEO and the chairman of the board. Uh, they were fully behind us. They wanted to do this deal. The company was really looking at expanding into medical aesthetics. It was a strategic goal of the company. Um, 
However, um, if you want to do a deal uh, in China, you have to get a full approval of every single board member. Um, and, and I think that's something uh, that's particular to China because you can get these deals done uh, with a US or US or European company and you're always going to have uh, some board members that are against it and that if a majority or two thirds are for it, the deal goes through and, and you've made your strategic partnership and your licensing. Um, and, and a lot of also this internal conflict that came from um, external factors that were happening in the country itself. Uh, there was a, a real fear um, that the government was going to start targeting uh, med tech companies. Uh, they were changing some aspects in the regulatory landscape. Um, and this led to a big fear um, at the board and uh, in the stock market. Uh, basically what happened is um, the, 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 their share price went down. Um, the company um, wants to provide dividends to, to, their, to their investors. Uh, and if they want to keep the government off their back, they want to be able to also generate sales and revenue uh, to provide uh, taxes to the government. Um, and since all this came together at, at this particular time and point, um, basically they decide, OK, we're going to shelve all the long term projects, put them on ice uh, and we're going to freeze our, our our diversification into other fields like medical medical aesthetics. That's no longer the priority. 